This man's in a fight too. And this woman. Not in a formal fight, round by round with a crowd roaring, but a strange and largely silent battle. On the one side, the grazier tending his flocks. On the other, the scientist creating synthetic fibers to surpass wool. The outdoors versus the indoors. A living thing, the sheep, and a living industry, subject to all the perverse whims of nature, against a dead thing from a world of sterile laboratories and man-made climates, and scientists playing with chains of molecules like children with beads on a string. Sheep are stupid things. They go where they're pushed. They don't know what gives, except good feed. Their masters know what gives, they think, but they don't agree. The pessimists say wool's on the way out, wool's dead, long live synthetics. But reality shows that the obituary is premature. Wool has its troubles, but the market's still expanding. Nevertheless, it has to compete with synthetics. On this front, as well as others, it has to fight. All Australian wool is in this fight, but the Merino has most to lose. The Merino is the Australian aristocrat, the best of his kind, the backbone of the wool industry. Rams like this don't know it, but they bear the future on their backs. The Merino didn't become an aristocrat and an emperor overnight. He has a long lineage. In Australia, it began in 1792 on Camden Park, not far from Sydney, when John MacArthur imported the first merinos from South Africa. They were a Spanish trade. MacArthur's home, Camden Park, stands firm as the merino he founded. From these pastures, where descendants of the original flock still graze, the merino spread until today it dominates not only Australia's, but the world's wool. For every person in Australia, there are 16 sheep, and 12 of these are merinos. After MacArthur laid the foundations, it didn't take long for the flocks to spread. Bare land was clear. The pioneers spread north and south and west, and the desert bloomed with land. From the start, the merino was the daddy of them all. Different strains of merino from Europe were added to MacArthur's South Africans, and they became the Australian merino, a sheep which could prosper on harsh soil. And today, visitors from lusher lands wonder how the merino lives, but he can even draw sustenance from the saltbush, like the lamb from its mother.